in high school, I had chemistry class, and in this classroom, the front half of the class, it, you know what, hold on. So we got this classroom, here's the door, here's the classroom. The back half of the classroom is all lab tables. So there's these long lab tables, they've got Bunsen burners, sinks, all kinds of stuff, and we would only go back there when we had to do experiments. The front part of the class was all desks, individual desks, and there's just row after row after row of desks. Front half, all desks. We spent most of our time up there. We would go to the back of the room if we had to do labs. So in this class, here's Muck. Here's me, I'm sitting right here. And I'm gonna call this guy Shaggy Boy. So in this class, we're sitting there. Now Shaggy Boy is your stereotypical skater. I should call him Sha Skater Boy, whatever. It's still an S, I don't even have to change the letter. Forethought. So Skater Boy, he's got long parted hair going down the sides. He comes in every day, long hair on the sides, those Jean Co jeans where you can't even see the guy's shoes because the bottom of the jeans flare out so much. Carrying his skateboard that he's not allowed to use in school, should have been in his locker, and like earbuds in. He would put, set up his CD player walking to class, which was one minute away between every class. He's in here one day, and we, uh, we have a, a lab, so we all go to the back of the room. Everybody is in the back half of the room at the lab tables. I needed a pencil or something. I went back up to the front to my desk and his CD player's on his desk and I'm like, oh, I'm going to play a small prank on him, an innocent little prank. This is what went through the muck mind. So I take his CD player and I'm like, I'm going to hide it and he's going to go, where is my CD player? And then I will reveal its location and laughs will be had and all will be well. These are my plans. I'm looking around for a hiding spot and there's nowhere to hide it because these are all desks. So I'm looking around up there and there's all these desks and these desks don't even have like the pocket on the bottom. There's nowhere to hide this thing. And so I'm like, okay, I'll hide it in his backpack and he'll wonder where it went because it was on his desk. I realize he doesn't, ha his backpack's with him at the lab. And I'm like, okay, I'll hide it in my backpack when he freaks out about where is his uh, CD player, then I'll reveal it and laughs will be had and all will be well. So I hid it in my backpack and went back to the back with my pencil and continued doing lab work. I totally forgot to, forgot I did that. <laughs> so I, the end of the class comes and I grab all my stuff and I leave. I completely forgot I had done that. We were on a block schedule, which means we had four like hour and a half long classes on A days and four hour and a half long classes on B days and they alternated. So I had this class on Friday so it was Saturday, Sunday, different classes Monday. And over the weekend, I realized I still had it. And I was like, oh my God. And I was freaking out because I had never done anything like that before. And Tuesday, I was like, I got to get to his class first and I got to put it on his desk so that he finds it. And then I'll go to my desk. So after the class before, uh, no, that's my plan, Curtius. There's no or, that's the plan. So after uh, my class that was before this one, whatever it was, no, 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 I, I had too much of a conscience to drop it in the woods. You don't understand. Also, it was Utah. They have no woods. There's like no woods to be found. Uh, I would have had to travel miles to find a tree. So my class before this one exits and I like a total dweeb who's eager to learn. I run to my next class. So I run in here and this guy, uh, we're gonna put a G because he, he's glasses. Glasses was already in here. So I run into the room go to my desk, dig through my backpack, find the CD player, put it on Skater Boy's desk. And I'm like, there, it's done, he'll find it, I'll play stupid, and all will be well. And I sit at my desk for like 60 more seconds, and I'm just like, there's no explanation for how this got here. There was like a whole weekend and four more classes between then and now, so he's gonna wonder how this thing got here. And I'm like, I've got to do something to throw him off the trail. So I was just like, I got it. You know, he, I'm sure he's got enemies. So I take a piece of, of uh, scrapbook paper and tear it out of my book. And I write on the paper, don't screw with, and I needed a name. And I immediately came up with, I don't know how I came up with this, Richard Greico. I wrote, don't screw with Richard Greico. And I opened his CD player and I stuck it halfway in there and jammed it shut. And I put it back on his desk. And I looked at the glasses guy and I'm like, don't say anything. And he's just like, I don't care. 
<laughs> so everybody else comes into class and he's like the last one to come to class, which has worked out great because then I was like one of 30 people in there. And he comes in and when he walks in and he sees the CD player and his face just lights up and he's so happy. And he is just like, oh, and he just speed walks the extra 10 feet to his desk. He's like, oh my God, I've been looking everywhere for this. And I'm just like, I'm writing nothing. I'm like, uh huh. And he's like, oh my God. And of course, he sees the paper sticking out the side of the CD player. He's like, what is this? And he pops it open and it says, don't screw with Richard Greco. And his face does this. He's like, who the fuck is Richard Greco? And he like yells it to the whole class. But it was just like elation, confusion, anger like all of these emotions hit him one after another and then he just yells to the class and we're all just like dude i don't know and he turns to me and he's like did you see who brought this in here i was like yeah some guy just threw it on the desk and left glasses boy like in the peripheral of my vision he's just he's doing his thing and just shaking his head and he's like what do you look like i was like i don't know white guy, brown hair, which was like 80% of the student body. And he's just like, ah! And I'm just like, oh my gosh. So he, he gets mad and he throws the note in the trash and like we proceed on through our class. This guy is seething for 90 minutes, okay? And he then proceeds to like, we leave and I'm like, okay, I returned it, my conscience is better and no one's in trouble. This is the best outcome. And then I'm like, there's no one named Richard Greco that goes to our school, is there? So, like, two days later, I see him again. And, you know, we're back in the chemistry class. And he comes in, and he just storms in and sits down. And I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, I have asked everyone in every class I'm in if they know Richard Greco. I have checked the yearbooks. No one knows this guy. <laughs> he's just so mad. I'm like, oh my God. One last thing. Uh, on the day that it happened, I waited. I don't know why I wanted it. But after he left the class first, uh, I, <laughs> there, there, there were Richard Grycos that lived nearby, but none that went to the school. But after he left the class first, I don't know what drove me to do it. I went over to the trash can and I pulled this out. This is literally the piece of paper from like 15 years ago. And I kept it in my binder. That's it. <laughs> he never found out it was money. <laughs> That's it. That's the tale you asked for. Contact him now? No. There we go. I'll, later on, I'm going to highlight that story and then I never have to tell the whole thing again. That's it.